Welcome to the Space Dojo Code Kata. I'm your host, Josh Owens, and today we're going to talk about Kadira. So, you, you're using Meteor and you want to figure out like what the performance looks like in your production application, or you can even use this for staging if you want. I, I would highly recommend using Kadira. I use it to kind of nail down problems for myself and for customers and their applications. So. Uh, Let's let's give it a look here. So you just go to kadir.io and uh, they've got a step-by-step -step that'll work you through getting things installed. This is more of a how to use it tutorial. Um, I'm gonna open up Crater so you can kind of see uh, what things look like here. Uh, let me get back to the default state. So you can see like I get um, PubSub response times, which kind of matter, method response times, memory usage, CPU usage and uh, how many sessions are connected per host and so if we look here you can see um, you know we're doing right now traffic's a little down but we're doing about a hundred connected users um, and we're doing we're averaging about 43 right now um, And so if you're on a paid plan, you can actually click show host and it'll show you how many are connected to each device. Uh, same thing for memory, you can open that up and kind of look at that. Um, but the thing that I think matters for most, like I do code reviews and when people have a slow application, that usually comes down to the PubSub response time. And so if you just click here on this PubSub tab, you can, um, you can sort this by response time and you can see that categories actually has a super high subscription rate uh, and also has a the largest response time and so we can go in here and click on this uh, and when we click on one of these points on the graph you'll notice we get these blue traces down here and so if I just click on one of these we can see that the actual categories responded in about three milliseconds um, database wise we're using oplog I would highly recommend that maybe we'll do another one another code caught on that some at some point but you can see we actually spend a lot of time doing a categories find and then looping over the each so this this could probably be optimized uh, the other thing that's happening is we're kind of waiting on some stuff to happen uh, and so I'm not really sure why but for some reason when Meteor um, set up their pub sub system the publications are blocking and so if we think about the node event loop uh, we're actually gonna sit there and wait for one publication to finish before another one can run and so if you request five publications that's actually what this wait time here is indicating is that it waits for this to complete and then it's going to wait for the auto update client versions to complete and then these other three will all kind of go sequentially and so I don't really see a reason for that to happen the way that it's happening right now so you can use something like um, there's a the, the same company that puts out Kadira um, used to be called Meteor Hacks and they put out an unblock uh, that, package that you can in, uh, install and add to your publications right at the top to say this dot unblock and it will allow node to be more efficient and uh, utilize the coroutines the fibers properly to actually decide when something's gonna run so if you think about how like if you haven't heard of uh, coroutines or fibers before it's the idea that instead of having to write threaded code or uh, having to write callbacks or any of that kind of stuff um, instead you just write normal code and then you let the underlying process kind of decide what runs when and, and node functions in an event loop so when we use something like fibers it's able to say oh this needs to do a little bit of work and then it can pause while it's waiting and then something else can run and so you know we should be efficiently using the node event loop to um, and fibers to, to kind of decide what runs when um, it, you know we're not waiting for any kind of response from a publication so I would highly recommend adding this dot unblock to your publications um, again you should probably test it out just to make sure but I've added a global unblock call before and it didn't really cause any issues so I, I you know maybe maybe that's something that'll eventually see its way into core uh, 
let's look at this one instead. Here we go. So this is what I wanted to kind of show off. And so if you watch my other video where I talk about uh, indexing Mongo, uh, this plays nicely with that because you can pull this up and you can see, like I've added unblocked to some of these um, already. And so in order to pull up the post lists, uh, we can see, uh, can we see? No, we can't really tell where this query is coming from. Um, but we are asking for posts to be returned. And so you can take this selector and this sort, and you can build your query and kind of look at, you know, the, the query planner and try to figure out what you should be optimizing. So highly, highly recommend digging in here. I know that it's not like super intuitive to click here and click here and click down here and then like open all these up, but a lot of information in here. <clears throat> you can see like it's using op log. We're getting a limit of 60. Um, so it, it, it actually, it looks like it had cache documents. A um, lot, lot of interesting stuff going on in here. Uh, and I think this has to do with, I don't know, I don't remember. I forget now. Anyway, so you can really dig in here and, and, and go through a lot of these traces and figure out like why the site's slow. Like you can see we're doing a find on users by ID using dollar sign inquiry. Uh, we weren't sorting. I really have no idea why this was so slow. Anyway, interesting stuff. Uh, the other thing you can do is any kind of, um, you can look at the observer reuse. And so if we look at low observer reuse, one thing we'd want to see high observer reuse on would be this post list. And so it kind of tells you You can see we were waiting for data to come back, but if we had high observer reuse, if we changed, I think the reason we're getting low observer reuse is this posted at bit. Um, and so I know post list is that bit you see on the front page. And so I know for a fact with telescope, if we went in and added a, uh, change this query to be a little more performant and a little less specific, to opening the page, like instead just did a, uh, a sort by score and uh, we, the, the statuses were all correct. Um, and we went just off status two and sorted by score, then uh, this would go away, which is a timestamp based on when you're connected. And so, you know, if you connect at this minute and someone else connects in another minute, then the queries are slightly different. But if the queries can be the same and you have some kind of public facing publication um, then you should be able to get high observer reuse and so if we think about how meteor works you get uh, observers every time you do a query for a publication and it's basically going to be paying attention to when that data changes and anytime that data changes it's going to send it down to the client and so if we're able to reuse those observers we're going to cut down on our memory usage and uh, eh, theoretically probably a little bit of CPU usage as well. So uh, that's another thing to watch out for is just sorting by observer reuse and looking at like if you have a front page or a landing page or something that's like putting some data out there, you, you'd you want to see high observer reuse there, you know. So hopefully that, that is also helpful. And then you can dig into the methods as well and kind of see what's going on. So we can see with upvote post, if I click on one of these, we also get a trace and then we can dig in and you can see like there's some highly efficient inefficiencies going on in here where we're making calls to settings and users multiple times. This has to do with telescope and how it handles uh, callbacks along the way. So there's, you can add uh, listeners to any of the the data so whenever a post changes all these post callbacks get run and that's actually what's happening here while you see this over and over and over again um, and I think you know this this could be cleaned up and tuned up as well but it gives you an idea like what your methods are doing and how they're running and you know all that kind of stuff so you can dig into that and it shows you particularly like 
we can see here we spent a, a, a bunch of uh, there was some wait time uh, that was the method async do you have it in here yeah it looks like there were some slow spots in here but you know, you get a breakdown of whether you were making an HTTP call or waiting on the DB or sending an email or doing some kind of computation. So it gives you a much, much better idea of like why your uh, methods are taking so long to respond. And you can, again, you can sort by response time in here or wait time or DB time. So you can really dig in there. Uh, and then if you're upgraded too, you get live queries, which will allow you to kind of dig in and you can see here a lot of what we have are changed calls so a lot of people stay connected they'll keep the browser open um, and the added's are when they initially come in but then after that we get a lot of change calls and these are likely related to like the scores changing over time and that, that kind of thing so um, and then errors you know you can dig through here to find errors uh, I, I would probably recommend a different error tracking tool, but um, that we can dig into that in another video. Uh, and then this is a fun one too. You can actually take uh, snapshots, uh, profile the CPU and that kind of thing. So if you install the Kadira profiler, you can uh, you can turn this on if you have a paid plan and actually look at like what is the CPU doing. I think you get a little flame graph back, so kind of interesting as well. And then um, if you want, like locally, you can run Kadira and uh, you can tell it to connect in and you can actually instrument your local running app and look at different things that are going on locally as well as you're doing development on your machine. So maybe we'll cover that in another video. But I thought that this is kind of my thought process when I'm digging through here. I spend a lot of time in the pub subs and methods just trying to figure out how to make things faster. And that's, uh, I think, super important to kind of that speed perception that you get. If you have, like if you're using Iron Router, which I wouldn't recommend, um, and you're using a weight on, that's why you get that loading. If you're using something like uh, template level subscriptions, uh, hopefully your templates are broken down enough that, you know, you'll have maybe a couple different loading indicators on the screen. Um, you know, if you add this, uh, this dot unblock in there, then, you'll end up with things that are incrementally loading and you know it'll it'll speed things up and you can also again just use this information this pub sub to kind of figure out what needs to be indexed in your application um, based on highest response time or highest sub rate sometimes like I can tell post list would be a good one to probably optimize post list users that kind of thing so um, it, it's worth spending time. I, I've done some poking around in here before and done some indexing. So uh, if you haven't yet, now go back and watch the indexing video. I think that'll be super interesting to apply after you have this knowledge. Uh, and if you haven't installed this yet, you know, it takes two minutes or less to get Kadira up and running. It's, it's super, super easy to get going with a Meteor app. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Uh, we'll do another one. It, let's say we'll, we'll do 50 on this one since it's Meteor specific and not just JavaScript. Uh, but if you did enjoy it, feel free to go in and give it a thumbs up and uh, we'll do another one once we hit 50. This video has been a Space Dojo production. You can click the learn more button to find out more about us at spacedojo.com or you can click the subscribe button to get notified about new videos we put out each week. Thanks for watching.